Influence of the surroundings. Number one, do the surroundings in which mediums work exert any influence on the manifestations? All the spirits who surround mediums help them either for good or evil. Can't high order spirits overcome the ill will of incarnate spirits who serve as their interpreters and also overcome the ill will of other spirits around them? Yes, whenever they deem it useful to do so and according to the intent of the person who addresses them. We have already said highly evolved spirits can sometimes communicate to provide special assistance special assistance despite the imperfection of the medium and the surroundings, but then they remain completely outside such surroundings. Okay, so as you <clears throat> we go around the read um, this, 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 uh, this chapter, we see clearly that by the word surrounding, uh, Kardec is really talking about the energy level um, or the quality of the energies that surrounds that environment per se, right? Not necessarily the chairs and the and what's going outside of the window, but really the the kind of energy that is involving uh, the participants of those uh, meetings or those congregations, mediums and non-mediums, right? And I, I mentioned last time that in one of the questions of the spirits' books, and I never remember the numbers of the questions, but Kardec asked the spirits um, if the spirits influence in our lives, and the answer is even kind of scary to say, um, yes, much more than you can even imagine. So much so that you can actually say that they are the ones who run your lives, which of course is an exaggeration. Um, we run our lives. We accept the influences or not. Everyone is being influenced somehow. In God, from, from incarnate and from discarnate. That's how, and that's why companies pay so much money for advertisement, right? Because we are um, likely to be influenced. By, by things and advertise because buy things that we don't even know what for. We buy it and we got home, so what am I gonna do with this now? Because we receive influence bombardments of all kinds. So all of us have been influenced somehow. <clears throat> the more we elevate ourselves, the more we will elevate the, our surrounds, the, the, the energy around us and the the more we degrade ourselves, the more we degrade the energies around us. Um, and mediums are just like any one of us, right? What happens even more uh, likely to receive those influences because they have they are more attuned with the spiritual world. But we are all, all immersed. In, in spiritual energies. Now, um, can't high order spirits overcome the ill will of incarnate spirits who serve as the interpreter or mediums? Now, Kardec use all these terms to say mediums, right? And also overcome the will, the ill will of all the spirits that surround them. We discussed previously that what makes good spirits good is their willingness to assist to help at all times. That's why they are good. You know, if you go through the, all the gospel of Christ, it's all about assisting others, doing good to others, right? So good, good pretty much equals exercising charity, teaching, doing anything that is, will benefit others. So, more elevated the spirits are good spirits, always willing to assist, always willing to help. Their goal is to, <clears throat> is to help all, but 
squad is all all who are willing or are able to be helped. The model of the spirits are not going to waste the resource, you know, do not throw pearls to pigs, is the recommendation of Jesus. So they will try, they will present themselves, but if they see that the environment is not propitious, if the receivers are close to them, they will you know, step out. And let's assume that in the environment, six, seven individuals, there is one or two who are really trying. Those one or two receive. The surroundings, the, the, the place itself may not be adequate for those high order spirits to be there. I like to say the word physically, but you understand what I mean, to be there really present, but that doesn't stop them to help those, those one or two who are actually trying to gain something in that meeting. They can assist at some distance. Again, they can radiate to their thoughts, they can radiate their, to that one or two who are able and willing to be helped at that moment. Okay, comments, questions? Number three. Number three. Do high order spirits attempt to bring frivolous meetings back to the field of more serious ideas? High order spirits do not attend meetings in which their presence would be futile. However, they willingly go to surroundings where there has been little instruction, but where there is true sincerity, even if they only find deficiency instructions there. However, they do not go to intellectual environments in which sarcasm reigns. In such cases, it is necessary to impact eyes and ears, the role of rapping and mocking spirits. It is fitting that those who pride themselves on their knowledge be humiliated by spirits who are less knowledgeable and less advanced. So again, um, the good spirits, you always use the opportunity to assist to help because that's what they make, make them good. But there is no imposition. There's a respect of one's free will. So the higher the spirit, um, they will try to bring seriousness, seriousness to a frivolous medium if they feel that it, they can accomplish something. But that makes a very important uh, distinction here and say, however, they willingly go to surround us where there, there has been little instruction. That's very important uh, that you differentiate what we always try to say, ignorance. Um, you can differentiate ignorance in two ways. The one who had not received instruction, where there is a lock, lack of instruction, and the one who ignores or neglect the instructions. Those are two different things. Yeah. So in an environment where there is a lack of instructions, good spirits will provide those instructions. We'll try to fill that need, okay? I mean, I may be doing wrong over there because nobody ever told me, showed me how, how to do right. Someone may catch, my, may catch me and, and guide me to do the right if I'm willing, if I'm um, less proudful, I will take the lessons and I'll correct and I'll do it right. It's not because I'm evil that I'm doing wrong, it's because I do not know the difference of right right and wrong is because I was not properly instructed yet. Or there may be the case that I know very well what I'm doing and I choose to do this way and nobody can tell me what to do. Then it's I ignoring the instruction or neglecting the instructions out of my evil tendencies, so to say. 
So that's a big differentiation that I have to make here. Yeah. When, when the spirit is capable of assisting us, see there is a lack, lack of instruction that we are on the right path, on the wrong path, because we are now instructed what to avoid. They will provide us as instructions. Now, we make a choice to listen or to listen. If you choose to listen, they will be there with us. Be there with us. If not, they are busy. They respect our free will. We will make our choices. But but there is no empty space. And of course, over here, Kardec's mentioning a group of individuals who get together for the exercise of mediumship. So we've got a band of intellectuals with death, with sarcasm, with just having fun. It's, they just want uh, entertainment or something like that. They will receive what they're looking for. They receive the entertainments, the mockings, the rapping, and um, waste their time, perhaps even being humiliated and things. And let's think that this is a time in where there was a a science in every every block in Paris now it was the the new thing that everybody was doing. So there was a lot of little groups getting together to play with the spirits to receive spirits or to test the spirits and all kinds of things was happening. And some groups will get together for the what we call the right reasons to to be instructed or to assist. And I mean, over there, it was there for the inter entertainment to find out when they would get married, find out how is the numbers of the lotto next week, and all kinds of things. They would receive what they were looking for, of course. Okay. okay. Number four. Are low order spirits forbidden from taking part in serious meetings? No. Sometimes they are present at that at them in order to take advantage of the teachings that you receive, but they keep quiet like ignorant listeners during a meeting of scholars. So for this one, I can go back to the two types of ignorance here, most right? Am I ignorant because I have not received the proper structures, or am I ignorant because I neglect? or choose not to receive uh, the proper instructions. Yeah. Those who have not the opportunity, the opportunity will be given to them. How else are we going to learn? How will the more ignorant uh, learn if not the one who know more, take them, guide them, uh, uh, teach them? So of course that, um, what you call even low order spirits, we will be able to participate in, in more educated and more eloquent meetings as a learning uh, instrument, which it is for most of us. You know, you go to our, our spirit, our mentorship meetings, and we say we are here to learn. We're just little, little students in this in this field. And when those spirits go to places where they cannot really um, add to anything because they are dead. Just to learn, they'll be quiet and like a sponge, absorb as much as, as, much, as, more as, they, as, much as they can. So they'll be quiet and then um, try to, to, again, absorb or suck in all the information that is being available to them. And of course, talking about the ones that are ignorant, because they did not receive the instructions yet. Okay, we can move on if you no comments. Okay. 2.32, it would be erroneous to believe it necessary to be a medium in order to attract the beings of the invisible world. They are everywhere. They are constantly around us, next to us. They watch and observe us, interfere in our meetings, and follow or avoid us. 
depending on whether we attract or repel them. The mediumistic faculty does not have any influence upon this. Rather, it is simply a means of communication. According to what we have seen concerning the causes of sympathy and antipathy among spirits, we can easily understand that we are surrounded by those who have affinity with our own spirit, that is, according to our advancement. If we would further consider the moral state of our globe, we would comprehend what kinds of spirits must predominate among discarnate spirits. If we were to regard each nation in particular, we would be able to discern which orders of spirits would be found in it by the dominant character of its citizens and the degree of their moral and humanitarian pre preoccupations and sentiments. Using this as a starting point, let us imagine a meeting of frivolous and inconsequential individuals who are solely interested in their own pleasures. What kinds of spirits would prefer to be amongst them? Surely not highly evolved ones, since our own scholars and philosophers would not waste any of their time in such places. Hence, every time persons meet together, there is among them a concealed assembly of spirits who sympathize either with their good qualities or imperfections, aside from all thoughts of evocation. Now, let us suppose that there is a possibility for these persons to communicate with beings from the invisible world through an interpreter, that is, a medium. Which spirits will, which spirits will respond to their call? Obviously, the ones who are already there, who are looking for nothing more than a favorable opportunity. If a high order spirit were evoked during a frivolous meeting, it might answer and even utter some sensible words like a good shepherd who comes to his wandering sheep. However, if it, is, if, it is sees, if it sees that it is being neither understood nor listened to, it will leave as you would do, you would do it in its place. And the other spirits will have the feel to feel feel free for themselves. <clears throat> so this is quite simple. So um, first of all, we are all mediums. Few of us are ostensibly mediums, but we are all capable, and we are constructed constantly being receiving um, spiritual energies, spiritual thoughts. Um, some will accept, some will reject, some influences us, some leads us to do things that we would like to do, some leads us to, to do things that after we do say, why did I do this? Right, but because we're constantly being bombarded by energies, because we are all mediums. Few of us are ostensibly mediums, but we all receive uh, influence from the spiritual world. Now, what kind of influence do we receive? What kind of energy do we receive from the spiritual world? It's even scary to go what Kardec is, is suggesting over here if you were. If, if you were to regard each nation in particular, you would be able to discern which orders of spirits would be found in, in it by the dominant character of its citizens. We have to be careful with that, but you know, truth is the truth, reality is reality. We make our neighborhoods, we create our associations and when we discarnate, where do we go? Where do we stay? Where do we hang out? Of course, where do we find more comfort? Where do you have a sense of belonging, right? And that would be in association to the energies that is found in that particular areas. So, but imagine right now, each one of us in our homes are truly engaged in, the, in these stories, 
uh, truly um, trying to to learn this topic, truly try to elevate ourselves, receive um, the inspiration from the spirits. We we'll see with us now. The ones that are interested on football game, the ones who are in, in, interested in the, ne in the next uh, glass of wine. Of course not. We created this around for us here now, in accordance with what we have in mind, what we intend. You know, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you where you are. Right? Now, again, good is good. And what makes good is the intention of always being helpful. But, but good is not stupid. Good is not wasteful. Good does not throw our pearls to pigs. So if a high order spirit were evoked to a frivolous medium, it might answer and if utter some sensible words like a good shepherd who comes to his wandering ship because that's what good good do, does. Good tries to elevate us. It tries to bring us to a higher level. It tries to make us from frivolous to a little bit more serious, with some content in our medium, in our medium meetings. Then, however, if it sees that it's being neither understood nor listened to, it will live. Because again, good is good, but it is stupid and not a waste for resource. They will do their best to be with us. But if we continue to kick them out, they will move on and let us do our things. And um, if the same goes to, let's say, to the whole planet as a whole, and truth is, it can break down into countries and it can break down to cities, it can break down to our homes and it can break down to the mediumship meetings throughout this planet right now. What is the kind of energies that the participants of this mediumship meetings are, are maintaining to create the attractions of what kind of spirits? Who wants to be there to do the work? And again, but keep in mind that in you know, a work of assistance, of work of rescue, the, the kind of energy in the ambient is highly elevated, so much so that the angry spirits come and complain. I hate this place. I don't feel good here. Why do they say that? Because the kind of energy is not really comparable what they have in mind, what, what they are used to. I don't feel comf comfortable here. Of course not. You know, you are living um, surrounded by wolves. When you get among a ship, you feel, feel weird. It's different. Mm -hmm. So is, I just want to make sure that you don't not have this false idea that in a, in a leadership meeting they receive angry spirits is the energy is not elevated. The, the energy is no longer is, but must be elevated in order to be helpful to those spirits. And, of course, to protect us. Extremely important. Okay, comments, questions? We move on. Two thirty-three. A serious meeting is therefore not always sufficient for receiving elevated communications. There are individuals who never smile and yet their hearts could not be pure. More than anything else, it is the heart that attracts good spirits. No moral condition impedes spirit communications per se, but if our moral conditions are bad, we will communicate with those who are similar to us and who will not waste the opportunity to deceive us and who will almost always stimulate our prejudices. We can thus see the enormous influence of the surroundings upon the nature 
of intelligent manifestations. However, this influence does not exert itself as some persons formerly thought it did when the spirit world was still unknown, unlike nowadays, and before the most decisive experiences had cleared up doubts about it. When the communications agree with the way that the participants normally see things, it is not because their opinions have been reflected in the spirit of the medium, like in a mirror, but because the spirits are sympathetic with them. Whether whether for good or evil, or share in the same opinions. This is proven by the fact that if they could attract other spirits to communicate with them instead of those who customarily surround them, the same mediums would speak in much different styles and, will, and would say things quite removed from their normal opinions and convictions. In sum, the conditions of the surroundings will be better as there is greater moral homogeneity for the good, pure and more elevated sentiments and a more sincere desire to learn without preconceived ideas. Okay, so primarily to summarize everything, mm -hmm. what creates the atmosphere that surrounds the energies of one environment when we are dealing with um, mediumship, when we are dealing with receiving the inspirations, guidance from the spirits, is our moral qualities or lack of it. More elevated the spirits, you'll try their best to assist us. But if in a group of five, six, ten indi individuals, everyone maintains a very low kind of, 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 um, of energies, they will attract um, spirits as like them, and there will be no room for more elevated spirits. Could they force their way in? Yeah, they could. Would they? Very unlikely. If there is again in, in that group of six, seven, ten people there where in which the majority is maintaining a very low kind of energies, but if it's two or three that is really trying, those two or three will benefit from the seasons of, of very spirits that don't need to be there. They can radiate their energies, their thoughts, their inspiration, those two or three individuals, and they will receive uh, what is, um, what's good for them, what they, are, what, what they are looking for. But again, the model is what really makes the whole difference. We got a room full, full of intellectuals, really smart individuals with lack of moral qualities, that not be su suffice for uh, better spirits to be present over there. But again, mm. highly intellectually enlightened could be also um, morally uh, educated as well. One thing does not preclude the other. Mm. It's very awesome, they kind of work together actually. So it's a symbiotic relationship between the two. Okay. Okay. So we can go into the leadership in animals, um, chapter 22. I particular think that Kardec uh, spent a little more time on it than was really necessary. But again, where am I? Okay. Yeah, well, good. I agree. That's a long chapter for the subject. Yeah. Okay. So we begin. Mediumship in animals. 234. Can animals be mediums? This question has been frequently proposed, and certain facts appear to indicate an affirmative response. What have especially given a reason? for accepting such a possibility are the noteworthy indications of intelligence in certain trained birds, which seem to guess people's thought 
in drawing from a pack of cards the ones corresponding precisely to the question posed. We have observed such experiments with special care. And what we have admired most is the skill that had to be developed in order to teach the birds in the first place. We cannot deny that they possess a small dose of relative intelligence. And we must agree that in the circumstances alluded to, their perspicacity might surpass that of many humans because few persons could boast about being able to do what these birds do. It might even be It might even be necessary in a few cases to imagine that they possess a gift of second sight superior to that of the most lucid somnambulists. We know that lucidity is in fact essentially variable and is subject to frequent intermittencies. Whereas among these birds, it appears to be permanent and functions with a regularity and precision that could never be found in any somnambulist. In other words, they would never lack it. Most of the experiments that we have witnessed resemble those practiced by stage musicians, and we cannot help but doubt the means employed, particularly the way the cards are prepared. The art of stage magic consists in disguising the sleight of hand without which the desired effect would not be achieved. However, even when the phenomenon of the birds is reduced to such proportions, it is no less interesting because we would nevertheless have to admire both the talent of the trainer and the intelligence of the student since the difficulties to overcome are much greater than if the bird could only act by employing its own faculties. Managing to enable the bird to do things that exceed the limits of what is possible for human intelligence proves by its very nature the use of some secret process. However, it is indisputable that the birds only acquired such a degree of skill after some time, a special and persevering care, which would not be necessary if their natural intelligence had been sufficient to produce the same results. It is no more extraordinary to train them to pull cards from a deck than to accustom them to singing or repeating certain words. The same applies when a stage magician wants to imitate second sight. He or she takes the individual who is under his or her influence to the extreme so that the illusion may be more lasting. Ever since the first time we watched a session of what, that kind, we have seen nothing more than a very imperfect imitation of somnambulism, which revealed an ignorance of the most essential conditions of that faculty. Mm. Uh, um, do my best to go to 235 also. Okay. In any case, the above experiments leave the principal question intact. For even though somnambulism can be imitated, that does not negate the actual existence of the faculty and the imitation of mediumship in the birds proves nothing against the possibility of a similar faculty in them or in other animals. Therefore, what we must determine is whether or not animals are as capable as humans to serve as intermediaries for spirits and their intelligent communications. It would at first seem logical to suppose that a living being that is gifted with a certain degree of intelligence would be more appropriate for such effects than an inert lifeless object, a table, for example. However, such is not the case. Mm. Thanks. Okay. So, can I put in you know, three pages to come to the conclusion at the, at the very end? Say, however, that's not the case. <laughs> it could, in my opinion, do these whole things much quicker. But what we see here is Kardec completeness on his scientific methodology. It takes a hypothesis. Are birds or are anim are animals, uh, can animals be 
be mediums? Can, can animals be an intermediary for the spiritual world? Again, the question is not, are they able to perceive the spiritual world? That's a two completely hypothesis. You have to differentiate them. Can dogs have perception of spirits? That's a different thing. Have a perception and be an intermediary of the spirit to completely things, right? And I'm saying that because we have had, I had had the discussion with other individuals who say that um, animals, dogs, cats are very attuned with the spiritual world. They see everything in the spiritual world. And I don't know how they come to that conclusion. And um, but that's a different discussion. The discussion here, can they be intermediaries from, from, the, from, the, from the spirit of the physical world? That's what a medium is. And it would it matter that no, any scholar and educated person like that could say, oh, come on, that's ridiculous, forget, move on. But because he has, because he's a scientist, because he, he's, he proposed to bring spiritism through a scientific methodology. He goes through all this discussion. Yeah. He says, okay, they are saying out there, saying out there that birds um, can actually um, be like somnambulistic mediums that can actually receive um, answers from the spirits and pass it to us. And that has been somewhat um, not proved, but demonstrated by birds at the hands of ma magicians. And I got to say, well, to begin with, this magician. So magician is trained to deceive people. That's the job. And it's a wonderful job that they do, very entertaining. I like it very much, but I know that what they do very well is deceive me with the, with the quickness of their hands, with whatever tricks they have. That's what they do, they do wonderfully, right? Yeah, that takes considerations that, yes, animals have, uh, what's the word that you use actually? A minimum amount of intelligence, right? is more those of relative intelligence. I don't even want to quote what he says to here. Okay. Well, Sessa is more those of relative intelligence. We know that the animal has some degree of intelligence. Okay. And, and he sees over here those, those the animals, they can be trained. They can learn to perform these and those things. Then he brings a very important argument. The only um, birds that has acted as sonambulists, supposedly, okay, this is your hypothesis, are the ones that have been trained by those very well-trained individuals to deceive us, the magicians. magicians. We don't know uh, of cases of, I don't know, um, a parrot or a sparrow come to me or to anyone else and relieve and, and retreat and give us a message from the spiritual world. Never heard anything saying something that, no. right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that those, <laughs> uh, those birds that could somewhat be sonambulists can actually receive message from the spiritual world are those being trained by magicians who are trying to deceive us, what they expect, expect and deceiving. As a profession, I said they hear this is okay, but that's the job. They're doing wonderfully well, and I like them very much, particularly, right? So Kardec has the, the need to do this. Instead of just brushing off the idea, oh, it's stupid to not even think about. Okay, you bring the hypothesis, let's evaluate, let's put it together, let's think about it. And he goes to all these things to come to the conclusion there and say, quote, however, such that's not the case. The theory is if it, they can use a table, if they can use a, a, a chair, 
to give us messages. Why you do not use the animals who have some degree of intelligence? That's a very good argument. But however, that's not the case. Okay, comments, questions? And again, we're not talking about the ability of an animal to have some degree or high degree of perception of the spiritual world. Talking about serving as an intermediary, two completely different things. And to serve as an intermediary, the animal would need to be to have intelligence and be able to communicate. And that's, yeah. you know, for me, it kills, it kills at the, in the beginning. Yeah, the rest is, is just. Uh, it's kind of like doing his job. I can, I can only mess up. Do I really have to go through this? <laughs> and I say, yeah, I have to. <laughs> okay. Does Kardec being Kardec, doing his job to perfection, so to say? Yes. Okay. A Spirit's dissertation on the issue, 236. The issue of mediumship in animals is fully resolved in the following dissertation given by one of the spirits who profinity, whose profinity and sarcastity may be appreciated in many quotations that we have already cited. To better appreciate the value of his comments, it is essential that we recall his previous ex explanation in number 225 above concerning the role of mediums in the transmission of communications. The following communication was given at the Parisian Society for Spiritist Studies following a discussion on, discussion on the matter. Today, I shall address the issue of mediumship in animals, which has been brought up and argued by one of your most avid members. In virtue of the maxim, the one who can do the most can do the least. He believes that we should be able to mediumize birds and other animals, using them to communicate with the human species. It is what you call in philosophy, or more particularly in logic, purely and simple sophism. He has said, since spirits can animalize inert matter such as a table, a chair, or a piano, they should with more reason be able to animalize already animated matter, especially birds, especially birds. Nevertheless, this is not and cannot be the case within the normal laws of spiritism. First. Okay, thanks. Okay. So I just want to make a um a point over here that um, Sophia, when you look in the dictionary, and I have to look in the dictionary, mm -hmm. is uh, an argument that is apparently correct, but in actuality, it's invalid and it's used to deceive. Uh. It's an argument that it 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 carries. It leads us to believe in a falsehood, basically. Okay, that's when we usually say they have to differentiate logic from reason. So by a logical thought process, I say, yeah, it makes completely sense. If they can use an inanimate object like a chair, why not use a bird, an animal or a bird who already has vitality? sense right in logic yeah but it's unreasonable it's not possible in according to the to the laws of spirituals okay, okay. first let us consider things for a moment what is a medium a medium is the individual being who serves as an intermediary for spirits so that they can easily communicate with humans, that is, incarnate spirits. Therefore, without a medium, there can be no tangible, mental, written, physical, or any other type of communication. There is a principle that I am sure all spirits accept, 
similars act through similars and like their similars. Well, what are the similars of spirits if not incarnate or discarnate spirits? Is it necessary to repeat this incessantly? Well then, I will repeat it again. Your and our perispirits are drawn from the same environment. They are of an identical nature. In a word, they are similars. They both possess the capacity of simulation that is more developed or less so, and of magnetization that is more vigorous or less so, which enable us discarnate and incarnate spirits very quickly and easily to establish a connection. Thus, what pertains spe specifically to mediums, to the very essence of their individuality is a special affinity. And at the same time, a special power of expansion that suppresses in them every possibility of rejection, establishing between them and us a kind of current or fusion that facilitates our com communications. It is ultimately this possibility of rejection proper to matter, which opposes the development of mediumship in most of those who are not mediums. People are always eager to exaggerate everything. So, and I do not mean materialists, deny that animals even have a soul while others want to see them as possessing one that is similar to ours. Why would, why would they want to confuse the perfectibility with the imperfectable? No, no, be assured of this. The fire that animates animals, the breath that enables them to act, move, and speak in their own language does not, at present, have any ability to mix, unite, or merge with the divine breath. The ethereal soul, the spirit, in short, that which animates the essentially perfectible being, the human being, rule of all terrestrial creatures. Now, isn't it this essential condition of perfectibility? that endows the human species with superiority over all other earthly species. Thus, you should realize that there can be no individuals of any other species living on the earth that are similar to human beings who alone are perfectable in themselves and in their works. Can the dog whose intelligence is great amongst the animals and who has become humankind's friend and companion perfect itself through its own initiative no one would dare affirm such to be the case, for dogs do not enable other dogs to progress, and the most well-trained among them have all been trained by their owner. For, you, for hundreds of thousands of years, beavers have constructed their lodge upon the water, always with the same proportions and according to an inva invariable system. Nightingales and swallows have never built their nests differently than their ancestors did. A sparrow's nest before the flood would have been the same as a sparrow's nest nowadays, made under the same conditions and by the same system of interweaving grasses and sticks gathered in springtime, the season of love. Bees and ants in their little organized republics have never varied their habits of gathering provisions, their way of behaving, their customs and their productions. Finally, spiders have always weaved their web in the same way. On the other hand, if you search for the leaf huts and tents of humankind's early ages, you will find that they have been replaced by the castles and the palaces of modern civilization. Garments of animal skin have been succeeded by fabrics of gold and silk. Finally, at every step, you will discover proof of the unceasing forward march of humankind's progress. From the constant and invincible and undeniable progress of human species, and from the indefinite standstill of the other animi, animal, animi, animated species, you will conclude with me that there are principles common to everything that lives and moves on the face of the earth, breathe and matter, breath and matter. And it is no less true that only you as incarnate spirits are subject to that inevitable law of progress that fatalistically impels you always onward and forward. God has placed the animals at your side as exhilarators to feed, 
clothe and aid you. God has given them a small degree of intelligence because in order to help you, they must understand you. And God has con conditioned this intelligence to the services they must render. However, and the divine wisdom of God did not will for them to be subject to the law of progress in the same way. That is how they were created. That is how they have remained and shall remain until, until the extinction of their species. It used to be said, spirits mediumize and cause inert matter to move chairs, tables, and pianos. Cause to move, yes. Mediumize, no. Once more, without a medium, none of these phenomena are produced. What is so extraordinary about the fact that we can cause inert passive matter to move with the help of one or several mediums is precisely because because matter per se is inert and passive and can be enabled, be enabled to obey the movements and impulses with which we want to endow it. It is obvious that we need mediums in order to do this, but mediums do not have to be immediately present or conscious. Since we can act with the elements they furnish us without their knowledge or presence, especially when the phenomenon of tangibility and our portations are involved, in our fluidic envelope, which is more imponderable and subtler than the subtlest and most imponderable of your gases, the joining, combining with the blending of the medium's more animalized fluid envelope, whose properties of expansion and penetrability escape your core senses and is nearly inexplicable to you, enables us to move furniture and even break it in empty rooms. Certainly, spirits can make themselves visible and tangible to animals, and it often happens that a certain fright grabs hold of them, which seems unreasonable to you, but is caused by their seeing one or several such spirits who have had intentions with regards to the individual's present or the animal's owner. Quite often, horses are seen refusing to advance or retreat or rearing before some invisible obstacle. Well, you can be certain that that invisible obstacle is almost always a spirit or group of spirits having fun in deterring them. Remember Baum's ass, which upon seeing an angel and fearing his flaming sword, did not want to go any further. It was because before it visibly appeared to Baum, the angel only wanted to make itself visible to the animal. I will repeat, however, we do not directly mediumize animals or inert matter. We always need conscious or unconscious participation of a human being because we need a joining of similar fluids, which we cannot find in animals or plain matter. Thanks. They say that Mr. T magnetized his dog. <laughs> what was the result? He, he killed it. The unfortunate animal died after having fallen into a kind of lifeless or languor as a result of having been magnetized. In effect, infusing the animal with absorbing fluid of an essence superior to special essence of its own nature, the owner killed it by producing an action upon it similar to lightning, though much slower. Thus, since there is no possibility, possibility of assimilation between our perispirit and the fluidic envelope of animals per se, we would immediately kill them if we tried to mediumize them. Having established this point, I perfectly recognize the existence of diverse aptitudes among animals, that certain feelings and passions identical to human feelings and passions develop in them, that they are sensitive and grateful, vengeful and rancorous. According to the good or bad treatment they receive, God in doing nothing incompletely has given domestic animals, humankind's compassions and servants, the qualities of sociability that are completely lacking in animals that live in the wild. However, between that fact and their ability to serve as intermediaries for the transmission of spirit's thoughts, there is an abyss, a difference of natures. You know that we draw from the medium's brain the elements required to give out thought a form that is sensible and perceptible to you and that it is with it the help 
and that it is with the help of his or her own materials that the medium translates our thought into common language. Very well. What elements would we find in the brain of an animal? Would there be words, letters, certain symbols similar to those we find in even, even the least intelligent human? Nevertheless, you will say that animals comprehend human thought and can even divide it, divine it. Yes, trained animals comprehend certain thoughts, but have you ever happened to see them reproduce them? No, thus we must conclude that animals cannot serve as interpreters. To summarize, mediumized phenomena cannot be produced without the conscious or the unconscious participation of mediums. It is only among incarnates who are spirits as we are, that we find those who can serve us as mediums. As for the teaching dogs, birds, and other animals to perform this or that service, that is your business and not ours. The radiast. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. I didn't need to push oh, no, and no, not come no, back to this. Dark. No, no way. Is this, that correct? Is really, I mean, truly it's important. a nice reading, actually. <laughs> I think we should, uh, the, the last phrase should be the, 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 the only thing we should have read, yes. and that's it, right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, want to play with this. It's perfect. Well, one, one I have to imagine if uh, Kardec devotes so many pages to this topic, uh, at least at that time, probably that he was being bombarded with these questions, with this, with this issue that he need to put a a big no, a final no to it, and had to have to have this very convincing intelligent uh, message from 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 Erastus. Um, we cannot um, mix things. Sure. Domesticated animals uh, are wonderful things. They can learn a lot of things. Uh, do they have a petty spirit? Can we call what they have as a petty spirit? I leave that question because I don't have the answer, but I do have something, right? Mm -hmm. Now, whatever that thing is, it's definitely not comparable to humans. Therefore, they can we cannot have an association of the two petty spirits, right? It's just plain and simple. Now, and as I say over here also, that he is understand that animals can have a perception of the spiritual world which we have to be very careful because animals has a tremendous amount of perceptions that we cannot even get close to it. Right. You know, the, 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 um, a, a dog with, um, mm -hmm. with a stuffed nose, we will have a, 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 an ability to smell things at, at least a thousand times more than we do. Okay. So they will we smell things that you can not even imagine, right? So the perception, right? so everybody that a dog has some kind of perception, you can, you can't go quickly and say, oh, there is a spirit in the house. You just saw a spirit passing through the door, come on. <laughs> it's many things that you, 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 you could even imagine. But there is the immense amount of perception, an animal and a horse and a dog, you know, big, big, that is way beyond our ability to understand it, purely physical, purely sensorial, purely with their, with their brains that is developed to have that kind of sensitivity. Besides that, so they have some perception of spirituality, yes. But you're not gonna say that everybody that a dog barks, you don't see anything around, they're gonna say it's because a spirit is there. No, please be intelligent, yeah. right? And I think we put a, an end to the discussion. I think I asked for an end to the discussion. And if anyone I mean, sees that the animals, especially people like dogs a lot, I love dogs, <clears throat> they can actually serve as an intermediary, it's, it's just not reasonable. Mm -hmm. And now in this case over here, the guy magnetize the dog and the dog died. <laughs> the dog died. I mean, <laughs> again, it's, it's a different thing over here. Let's say if your dog is sick and you want to know 
give your dog a pass, let's say transmit some good energies, you can do that. They're not going to kill it. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> And I think we we close this now. And uh, there's any questions? I think with all this, um, Almo, uh, we're still going to find people not understanding. So, uh, kind we of do. A beautiful job. Get a beautiful I, job explaining it. I remember the case of this couple who came. John was not there the day, and I think I've mentioned that before. That uh, the man was saying how his um, his um, spiritual guide was actually a white horse and and they keep seeing that white horse when they were going to places and the white horse was always there with them and she could see his garden angel was a white horse and when i tried to reason say well television spirits can change their shape and make themselves a different maybe that's what it is but you an angel would have to be a i over the human kind maybe they will which is a complete lab so that at least is more logical they will change their shape into white horses because they, you are more familiar you are like horse something like that. They, they become extremely offended <laughs> they left never came back they were really offended that i would say that a white horse could not be someone's uh garden angel to what am I supposed to do? To lie? Go along with that story? Yeah, right. Good, right? Yeah, you did the right thing. So we, we close here. Interesting. You make a final, final prayers. Yes. Father, dear Father, how spiritual benefactors are guardian angels. With our hearts full of gratitude, we thank you again, allowing us to open our hearts to what is necessary to understand, to keep focus and alert that surround us, to keep ourselves with our studies, keeping ourselves open to whatever comes to, to us in life. For we are grateful, dear Father, for all that you have given us here helping us and guiding us with all that is so important for us to evolve in this world of so much confusion. So we're grateful, dear Father. We thank you for that. We thank you for the teachers that are so de dedicated in the work here. Thank you, dear Lord. We can't express it enough. May we, for the rest of the week, be able to continue our studies, and most important, our prayers. To give thanks, God, for everything that we have received here, that continue, that we continue to receive, because we are so, so blessed. And not only for one day to give thanks to God, but every day, the morning when we wake up and at night when we sleep. Thank you for everything, Lord. May we be able throughout the week to keep ourselves focused with patience and love, with families and friends and guiding them as much as we can. And we have a beautiful two weeks of peace and serenity and gratefulness. We thank you, dear Lord. And we ask as we leave here today to return again with faith in our hearts that we are never, never alone. Thank you, dear Lord. And with that in mind, we ask permission to close our meeting tonight. So be it.